Joomla how-to videos brought to you by Gong Gong Communications. Looking at this page on my website, I think it looks a little boring, so I want to add an image to make it a little bit more exciting. Because images definitely make websites more engaging and people will stay on them longer if there's really great media. So I've got my beginners Joomla article open and now I want to add my image. So click your cursor wherever you want the image to be displayed. And don't you don't want to click it in the middle or over on the side because that can kind of screw up where the image will be inserted because it will literally be Im inserted in the middle of your sentence. So in this case I'm going to go at the very beginning of my paragraph. And I'm going to go up to that insert edit image icon that looks like a photograph with a star. And now it brings up the image manager. So I'm in the root of my images folder and you'll notice I've got a couple images and folders there now. But I'm going to add a new folder and call it icons. And now my icons folder has been added. I can better organize my images. So now I've got no files in here and that's alright because now I'm going to upload one. I'm going to click on this photo icon with the upward facing arrow and I have a couple options. I can either browse for the image from my computer or I can drag and drop the file directly into this box which is what I'm going to do. And then I click on upload and now you see I have my image as I want it to be displayed. So now if I click on it, you'll notice the URL of the image was added and it has alternate text. And alternate text is really important for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's important for um, visually impaired and handicapped people um, when their screen readers read the website. It's very important because that's how they know what the image is. Also, it's great for search engine optimization and if you want your picture to show up in say like a Google image search, that's how Google knows what the image is. So I'm now I'm going to say icon of teacher. So it has a little bit more information. You notice it has the original dimensions of my image and I can change that in the, in the edit article screen later if I want to, but if I know exactly the width of the height that I want it to be, I can change that here as well. So I'm going to say that I want it to be 300 pixels wide and because it's check proportional, it's going to automatically change the height for me. If you look over here, there's a preview that's showing me roughly what it's going to look like when I display it. And right now, the alignment's not set. But say I want it to go to the right side. I could click on right or left, and it will change where it's displayed. In this case, I want it to go to the right. And next, I'm able to change the margin. And what the margin is, is the space around the image and how close the text butts up to the image. I can leave it as equal values or I can uncheck that box and make different values for each one. In this case I don't think the right and the top need anything so I'm going to put those as zero and then for the bottom and left I'm going to put five and you notice in my preview it changes so there's more spacing. I can add a border if I like but I really don't want to. So now I am ready to go. I can click on insert and here's my image. It looks good, it's a good start, but I really think that I want to make it much smaller. So I'm going to click on it and click on the same insert edit image button again. And you'll notice it brings up my original settings. With websites and the images you use on them, you always want the files to be as small as possible. And if you're using a photograph that you took with a digital camera or with your phone, more than likely it's got really large resolution because it's set for printing purposes, which is exactly how you want it for printing, but that's not the best for websites. So what you need to do is if you can edit it down to a smaller size, then you should do so whenever possible. Because every time you visit a web page, your computer downloads all of the, the files and images that is displayed on that web page. So if you have a really, really big file or a really big image, it can take a long time for it to display. So what I'm going to do is over here on this right hand side, I'm going to go over to the edit image button, which is the little photo with the pencil. And it's going to give me a couple options. First of all, I can resize it. And say I want to make it 200 pixels wide. That's changing the size to be 200 pixels by 201 pixels tall. I'm going to click on apply. 
The difference between changing the size here and changing it in my article is in the article it's just resizing it, but the original file stays the same size. In the image editor, it is actually physically changing the size of the image and the file so it is a smaller file. Now I'm going to crop it to make it a different shape. This is really helpful if you have like a lot of white space around an image that you don't need. So I just drag and drop the bottom box here and I'm going to click on apply. And that's going to save the different shape of my file. And you'll notice I can change the name I'm going to say beginner new and that way it saves us as a different version rather than overwriting my original file. So I had my image and now if I want to move it around I can just click on it and drag it and drop it to wherever I want it to go. And then once I'm ready to see it live I can click on save, refresh my page, and now my image is displayed on the front end of my website. For more information and resources visit gonggongcommunications.com